G'day, I'm Ash. Welcome back to the channel. And you're seeing archival footage of me choosing a T34 to restore. Um, but I found this one inside my warehouse. I was going to restore a Panther or this M10, but ultimately decided with the T3485. Anyway, here it is. I'm doing a basic restore on this thing, um, pulling the parts off it and giving it a good old deep rust. And unfortunately, the only footage I have now from this point on is well it in its current cleaned up format that is now sitting inside this warehouse all i'm going to do really is basically install brand new parts on the thing and yeah that's about it so join me as we assemble and talk about the t3485 so i do apologize for the echo in the background we are working on audio solutions but for the most part it's decent enough that it's passable at the moment we're going to restore the engine first and foremost. This engine is typical of a Soviet vehicle. It, it's quite an interesting one at that. Uh, max speed about 55 kilometers an hour. It's a V2, a 34 V12 diesel, which developed about 520 horsepower. And in tank mechanic simulator, it's probably one of the oldest vehicles that is existing in game. A lot of the newer engines have newer parts or they have some form of interesting mechanic. Anyway, on to the turret. The turret is quite interesting, right? So, you know, secondary armament with the hull has got a 7.62mm machine gun, which is a coaxial. The main gun could fire APBC, APHE, or HFAB, which, which is a simplified armor piercing round. And this particular version looks to be a late 1944 model. But I really don't know much about the T34, at least the 85 uh, sort of variant. I know that they at least in earlier versions of the T-34, they carried their spare parts and transmissions on the back of the vehicle as they rolled out of the factories. And oftentimes they'd send crews to the factories and they'd drive them from the factories to the front lines. Uh, but in 1944, they had around 400 of these T-34-85s delivered to the front line units and become instantly popular with the crews. Obviously with a bigger turret and more operating space com compared to the T-3476, but the T-3485s outnumbered the older versions uh, by, and formed the bulk of the tank's offensive on operation uh, to the Soviet response and the Allied landings in Normandy. Anyhow, what I'm really disappointed about is that the D-Generals, the owner of this particular game, hasn't gone back and gone over some of their older models and given them a bit of a what's-up treatment. If you notice, there wasn't really much for me to really sort of screw in here or, or do. There was only a couple of sprocket wheels and then a handful of shock absorbers that magically went into place. There was no screws, there were no cylinders, there were no annoying little mechanics like that. I wouldn't say annoying, but it does make the older restoration of these vehicles quite an interesting endeavour because they are essentially, well, you know, pretty basic in their standardised form. All the rubber on the side there, shock absorbers, pretty new for a Russian tank. Crew comforts, the, the Russians really quite like the T-3485s. And there's a reason why it is considered to be used as even just a direct artillery support vehicle in, in the early 2000s. I believe Vietnam had a few of these running around in their army as well. So the T-34 is a, really just a versatile vehicle. It's got good tracks, it's got a decent suspension, it's got a huge amount of options that other vehicles of the class for a medium tank doesn't really offer. Sure, Sherman is very comfortable for your crew, but uh, can you just bash it to living daylights and not care about it and then get another vehicle? Probably not. Eh, T-34 is one of those debated vehicles. Is it one of the worst vehicles or is it one of the best vehicles? But for what it is, yeah, it's a pretty interesting vehicle, I guess, that nobody knows too much about. Unless you're on a Baltic state or you're, or you're in Eastern Europe, then, you know, T-34s are probably something you'd see on the common. Whereas down here in Australia, um, yeah, we don't really see things like this too often. So we're in the midst of installing all the sprocket levers and the and the, the idle wheels, and obviously all the parts and the assemblies for the suspension arms, as well as the road wheels and stuff like that. But this is a pretty easy process. There's nothing really much to it. Again, kind of why I just decided not to uh, re-record and, and redo the restoration of this T-34 because I thought, well, I already have it in storage. It's an older model. The Generals hasn't really updated it too much. So we're just going to focus on putting all the parts together, making a little bit of coin and seeing how we go from there. Exhaust pipe covers and the transmission hatches. 
retracks uh, i don't know why i play this game i think it's really fascinating to look at the geometric shapes of how a vehicle is designed and what, what went into the design process obviously restoring a vehicle is is a little bit different to uh the real world i've talked about this before you document everything you take it all apart or even before you take it all apart figure out what you, you what you had and then you clean selective parts and, and and try and find bits and pieces that you needed to restore the vehicle as you go along but unlike restoring a car or restoring a bus or a truck or restoring a, a motorcycle or something like that you can't really get off the hand shelf parts for t-34s like the last of the tracks are now installed which means that the last thing i have to do now let's see we'll just have to weld this up i did notice a bit of a spot there that i had missed no idea if that went away but there you go the black spot's gone okay let's continue assembling the interior of the vehicle here air filter fuel tanks radiators again very very simple comparatively with the mouse which took a lot longer this is actually quite quick fan covers fans yeah put all the engine covers back on we'll go and do the interior in a second ammunition boxes driver's seat and the radio operator's seat and I'm not really rushing here, but this is basically what would... It's just, it's just right-click simulator at this stage. Suspension cover, a couple more ammo boxes. Oh, I don't think there's anything else in this turret ring area. I think I've got everything? Ah, oh, no. We've got the machine gun ammunition for the assistant radio operator slash uh, driver. Okay. Cool. Right, let's go into the interior and see what we need to finish off inside. So I'll go into this one. Exhaust pipe, a brake drum. Uh, the final drive, which really should have been installed first. You usually do the interior of a vehicle, you know, last. But for a tank, I think it's like more important to do all the drivetrain stuff uh, like further down the line, you know. All right. I think I'm done for the interior. Having a look at some extra parts, we're just going to reinstall a couple of parts I forgot to restore. One more piece to go, and that's the accessory gear cover, which again, this doesn't really look like an engine. Um, wrong menu. Uh, hang on. Double check, we're 100%, 100%, 100%. .100%. Okay, what does resupply do? I don't know, who knows. Anyway, let's go put the engine back in in its particular thing. Uh, this T-34 is now complete, actually. And so, uh, I guess we can move it to the paint room and, and see what colour we can come up with. I kind of want to paint this thing pink. Open the door, please. Come on. There we go. Alright, so going to the paint room panel. We're going to paint this the most hideous colour ever. Alright, paint scheme. Let's select one of these. Why not? We'll go with the German T3485. Why not? And a very, very bright pink. Let's try and choose something that's kind of, I don't know, weird. I felt like having a pink tank in in in. in uh, you know, inspiration for that guy in, in the UK who bought a T-3485 and put it on a block of land and refused to, you know, remove it from the council. <laughs> and it just ended up as a local landmark. So, there you go. Th this video was to you. I know it's a very short video. I know this isn't something that is particularly long. I thought about doing something a little bit different today. So, you know, there's that. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.